All right, my favorite people, um, I'm going to show you how to reset the front of your assembly, and I'm also going to show you how to animate your puzzle cube. We have to reset the front before you leave assembly mode, or your animation is going to be a mess. So as you can see, while assembling this cube, it got a little cattywampus. If I click home, that's what I get for home view, and I really need a true isometric with a front top right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the wallet and pick the side that I want to be the front. Then I'm going to right click on the view cube, do set current view as front, pick the corner of the view cube, that'll put you back in an isometric view, right click that cube one more time, do set current view as home, fit to view. I'm going to save it. It's going to ask me save changes to dependent children. If it asks you that, tell it yes to all. Always save the children, guys. So now I'm going to open up an animation file. And the way you do that is under the I, go to New, and pick this thing down here that looks like a laser. It's called an IPN file. Click Create View. If you already have your assembly open, it will appear here in the file path. If it is not there, see the little uh, magnifier? Just click on that. And there's your puzzle piece. So, when I, when I animate this, the purpose of the animation is to show someone how the cube goes together and comes apart. When you're doing this, it's also going to be our exploded view for our um, documentation. So, when you pull the cube apart, there are two things I want you to remember. One, I want to be able to see each piece clearly so it's not obstructed by another piece. And two, I, when the puzzle is animating, I don't want to see puzzle pieces going through other puzzle pieces. Because Inventor is stupid and it will let you um, shove a solid through a, sh a solid and we can't even do that on the molecular level. But Inventor will let you do it, so don't, don't do that. To animate, zoom out a little bit, pick Tweak Components, click on a puzzle piece. And it gives you the three axes that you can move it on. And I'm going to go on the z-axis with this guy. I'm going to pull him up. I'm going to use my magnifier to see where I'm at here. And then I'm going to hit close. If you don't hit close between each one, it will actually auto-select more than one piece and it'll make your life difficult. So the pink piece is coming up too. I'm going to make him go higher. And I'm using my zoom by rolling my mouse. Now I decide that I want my puzzle, my pink puzzle piece to go higher because he's kind of hiding the yellow. So I'm going to just pull on the trail that I made, and he goes a little bit higher. Okay, now we're going to get this green piece, but I'm going to get it from the back. So I'm going to rotate this a little bit. Tweak components. All right, and it's not wanting to cooperate, so I'm going to make sure it's on the z-axis. And we're going to try again. There we go. Okay. Now the... This one is going to come out this way, so I'm going to close, I'm going to click Tweak Components, I'm going to click this, okay, now I'm going to go home, and what I, I should see is five puzzle pieces clearly separated from each other, it should be in an isometric view, and when I hit, tell it to play the animation, they should not run into each other, so let's try that. So I'm going to hit close, animate. If you change the interval, it speeds it up or slows it down. Repetitions just tells you, you know, how many times you want it to go together and come apart. If you use uh, this down arrow, you can, you can actually set the order in which they go. So if I wanted my pink to go first, I could move it up. And actually, I think I want the yellow to go before the pink. So I'm going to click on pink and do move up, a uh, yellow and move up tell it apply and then play the animation. So just making sure no solids move through solids and that seems to work. So then you just save it, click on the I, do save as, save it in the puzzle cube folder that it belongs in and name it like puzzle exploded or puzzle animation. If you want to play with the animation tool, it's actually a lot more powerful. You can make the pieces rotate and flip all over each other. If you do that, I just ask that you save it in a separate file because that's not going to help you when we go to do the exploded view 
uh, on on the computer. Okay, so hope that helps you guys, and I expect to see some cool animations.